Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Good. How are you? I don't know if I hopped in too soon. <laughs> no, it was perfect. Okay. I, um, I just said hi to someone and I have my computer open and Surrey picked up what I was asking and <laughs> trying to, Surrey is trying to join this conversation. He chimed in. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Good. Good. How are you? Good. I'm actually so glad you joined early because, or like right on time. Because a lot of times people are like two or three minutes late and then I'm sitting here rambling, just talking to, you know, like all by myself and I never know what to say. Well, I always account for having technical difficulties on my side. So I'm like, I'll just get there early in case <laughs> this didn't work for the first two tries. So. Totally. Um, well, welcome everybody who's joining us. My name's Lindsay Hine and I host the podcast. I'll have another with Lindsay Hine. Um, Molly has been on the show. I think you've been on twice, Molly, but... I, I think twice. I was trying to remember. Okay. Because we, yeah. we did a conversation after you broke the American record in Houston in the half marathon. And then I think we just did like a standard episode. But so much has happened with you since we last talked. I mean, it's been years. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's been, it's been a little while. <laughs> so congratulations on the baby news. Thank you. Yeah. I'm halfway just about in a few days. So. And how are you feeling? I feel pretty good. I am still running. I don't have any weird aches and pains yet, but like, I think you just have to take it a week at a time, it sounds like. So yeah, so far I'm still at that like 40, 45 mile a week range and it feels good. So. And what's your range when you're like in training? So normally I'm 90. Okay. Um, and if it's marathon, like, I don't know, 115, 120. So I'm, I don't know, like, I never know how 45 miles a week sounds to someone. To me, that's like, not very much. That's like what I did as a freshman in college and half what I normally do. So it feels pretty manageable. I feel like I could do more, but I'm like, I, I'll just keep it here. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, what is it like to, I know you've taken breaks before, obviously, like after big events and things like that, but what does it feel like for probably the first time in a really long time to just like run to run? Yeah, I mean, that part feels really good, too. Like, that's the other reason I'm not kind of, like, crazy pushing it, just because I'm like, oh, I, I think I need this to refresh myself if I'm going to come back in a serious way, you know? Um, and so I'm just going to enjoy a few months of doing that, and then I'll be, like, really motivated and recharged to, like, go back and dig deep again. Because it's a lot, you know, 13 years of 90-mile weeks is a lot. <laughs> yeah, tell us, um, like – you know, when I first interviewed you, one of the conversations, I know at some point we brought up motherhood and like the decision to become a mom as a professional athlete, um, whether you do that biologically or not. And I'm just curious your thoughts now that you're doing it, like what played into when you made that decision and how you made that decision and all those things. Yeah, it's definitely a big decision. You know, obviously you have to take a lot of time away if you're going to try and go through a pregnancy. Um, so, um, and that doesn't account for like, you know, if you're someone who has to try for a long time or, you know, it just is a lot on your body. And it's hard to, as a professional athlete, find the financial support through that. You know, recently, like we're so lucky that these conversations are being had by Alicia Montano and Allison Felix and Kara Goucher because it's really changed a lot. You know, it's not like we wouldn't try and broach these topics before. It was just you had no public backup. And so it was very easy for kind of everyone in the industry to say like, no, <laughs> basically, because no one knew about it. Um, so that's been amazing. That made me feel a lot less stress about it. But I'm also 37. So I kind of wanted to try and do it around now anyway. And when the Olympics were, were postponed, I was kind of like, oh, man, like I had wanted to try and have a baby mm. in 2022. And so I was like, I don't know. And then I got injured and it made it easier, actually, because um, the running was just not going very well for a couple months. And so I was like, you know what, this seems like a good time to take a break. Um, so that's, that felt very, I was glad that it was clear because like when things are going well in your career as a professional athlete, you work so hard for it to get your body there. And you're just like, Ooh, am I okay stepping away now? Or should I wait? Like you could do that for years. So mm -hmm. I was kind of happy that I had a very clear, like, okay, you should do it now. So, Yeah. Do you feel like, you know, you mentioned Alicia Montano and Allison Felix, Kara Goucher. Do you feel like now in 2021, like more confident than you think you would have felt in 2016 getting pregnant? I think so, because there's just more awareness that like there's support lacking and that, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, we're not given the timeline and it's just talked about more. And I think the value even is seen from, a, this is kind of like just a side thing, but from the marketing perspective that like, this relates to a lot of women and women are like part of the people that you're marketing to, you know, they're huge. Oh, your audio went out. Um, I'll limit it. <laughs> yeah. My, my Instagram limit for the day. <laughs> um, yeah. I was just saying like, you <laughs> oh. know, <it> really, <laughs> I, I blow through it all the time. Good um, for you. Doing that. Um, but yeah, like women are, you know, a big part of the marketing space and so I think they're just now seeing like you know this actually is really a great part of an athlete's storyline and um if you want <laughs> we're only just now seeing research that it might take a year a year and a half two years for an athlete to come back and it, but they come back in a big way so you know if you support them through that it's more than worth it so I think we're just now seeing that stuff um and it's it's talked about a lot which makes me feel good yeah, I mean, I oftentimes think about Kara and how quickly she ran that Boston Marathon so fast. And um, yeah, just like what she went through during all of that. And just like you said, I mean, her being able to just be a spokesperson for mothers who are athletes during that time, what could have been so beneficial? Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, I feel like the and even when she had cult that was still a lot of years ago and the the current trend was to push you to just pretend you never even were pregnant for nine months and gave birth you just try to bounce right back into elite sports and 90 mile weeks and trying to win a major marathon in six months and you know there are very few women who can do that without getting hurt I think I don't know it'd be interesting to hear I think Kara did get an injury after that but um we just know now that the timeline is a little different, but it's still, you still come back just as good or better than you were. If you yeah, allow are you happen. excited about that? Because you <coughs> do hear about women coming back and running so strong after baby. And we also, research is out there too, knowing that like, you need to give your pelvic floor the time to heal and all those things are so important now. Um, but how excited does that make you knowing, you know, all these women who have done it? Yeah, it definitely makes me feel good. And I feel like we're all like able to share information now. And um, there's even more studies going on now in the sports, even specifically in like the sports sphere. So I feel like I've been able to talk to those people, which, you know, five years ago, that wasn't as out there. That wasn't as available. Who are your um, <coughs> role model athletes? Um, so I've been talking, obviously, with Kim Smith and Roshin McGettigan, who live here in Providence, and they both have had um, two and three kids and um, they didn't really come back to competitive running but they trained through and then I've um, messaged Alicia about workouts and Alphine too just to say like what were you guys doing at this month or how are you doing now and so they've been they've been the most they're like my go-to's right now but um, it's been really helpful there's yeah. people offering too like lots of people are like if you have questions let me know so I'm like this is great <laughs> Yeah, it's always one of those things where you don't want to, like, just offer advice, you know, but, like, if people, you want to, like, offer your hand if you're, if people want that. Um, I'm sure that's how some people feel. Like, I don't want to get up in Molly's inbox telling her this <laughs> or that. Um, I'm curious how you walked through the Olympics this past year and, like, you know, being a 2012 and 2016 Olympian, I'm sure that was really difficult for you to have to miss it this year, even though you know, baby thoughts were on the horizon. How did you emotionally walk through that? That, I mean, that was tough, but I feel like I kind of saw it developing all season. You know, I kind of know, I was really disappointed after the marathon. I, you know, that's my injury, my ankle injury happened in the marathon buildup. And so I was kind of like, oh man, maybe I can get this under me if I track season. You know, I'm actually a better 10K runner anyway. Um, and when it just wasn't coming around, I kind of knew exactly what I needed to be doing in workouts and how that needed to feel and look. And it wasn't. So I was kind of like, ooh, like, you know what the odds are. Like, you kind of know at this point in your career what you know too much <laughs> to be, like, blindly hoping you'll make the team. So that was – I took it in small chunks, I think. And then um, it was still hard to watch. Like, I – I'm a super fan, so I tried to immer – I definitely fully had <laughs> immersion there. I was like, oh, this is amazing. But then you're still also like, oh, like, bummer. This is weird to be watching it from this side of the couch. You know, I haven't done that in maybe 12 years. So um, that part was tough. But, yeah, definitely more of a fan than 
sad about it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, what What was the most exciting <coughs> experience that you witnessed on the couch? <laughs> What was, what was the first part of that? The most exciting experience that you witnessed seeing from your USA teammates? I think probably the marathon, like just watching Molly, because there's so many times where you're like, oh, they're still there, they're still there, and then something will happen at the end. And so just seeing it work out, like you were like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen. Um, it's been so long since we've seen that. So I think that was that was probably the one where like I called a lot of people after and we were all excited. So um, Yeah, when I... <laughs> talking to you about this it's reminding me of my conversation I have with Jenny Simpson just because I'm like man you're two people that as fans we all just assume Molly and Jenny will be at the Olympics you know yeah yeah I know oh gosh and Jenny too she's like in the final up in the medals most years too so it's yeah it's hard to be good that good for that long <laughs> yeah you mentioned you're a better 10,000 meter runner than marathoner. Um, you know, obviously your debut marathon third place in New York is like a huge debut. But now I'm curious, if you had to pick, you, you go track? I love the track. Like, I just feel like I'm at home on the track, but I feel like I have unfinished business in the marathon. I definitely think I can run a better PR in the marathon. So I'm at 226 right now, and I really think I can run it a minute or two faster at least. Um, so that's what keeps drawing me back to that. But I'm just more natural on the track. You know, those workouts, I just feel like come to me better and beat me up a little less. So... Um, okay, so you mentioned Roisin and Alicia, both have been mentioned in this conversation. Talk to us a little bit about the podcast, Keeping Track, and how it's going. Yeah, Keeping Track. We're on season three, so it, we have we have more ideas than we have time for, which I'm sure you understand. <laughs> um, and we, Alicia was just at the running event talking to Alexi Pappas, um, and then she also talked to the DEI coordinator at Brooks, um, who will have her interview up as well. So that was great. She, I was supposed to meet her down there, but it didn't work out. So we have those two on the horizon. And then we have a couple people and a couple topical episodes in the pipeline. So yeah, we're definitely well into the third season. Um, and it's been fun. We feel like it's just a fun outlet to have for ideas and stories. And um, yeah, so far, we're hanging in there. <laughs> Do you find the topical conversations or the interview conversations more challenging? Um, I think the topical conversations were kind of an idea. I didn't really, like, I didn't really think about that. And Alicia was like, hey, we should talk about, you know, this or that, just the three of us. And I was like, I don't know how that's going to go. And then we did one or two and I was like, oh, like, that's kind of cool. It's like sports talk radio, which there's not yeah. a lot of women doing that, you know, so I was like, you know, we can sit up there and talk about stuff too. Um, I always like the interviews because I just want to be like, you just like, let's just like let this person tell their story and disappear. But I think as professional athletes, we do kind of have a cool, um, we can add something cool to the conversation or just something a little more unique. Um, so yeah, they, the topical ones were a surprise to like how, you know, I was like, oh, I see how this will fit in more. We can do a few more of these for sure. Yeah, I love those. And I, I do, I feel like I would get nervous. I don't know why. I'm always nervous to like spout my opinion or, you know, anything like that. So that's why I feel like those ones would be more difficult for me. But you guys do a really good job with it. I think because we also just feel like we're talking to each other about mm -hmm. it. Like if we were talking on the phone or something. So it helps that we just feel like we're conversational, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, take out the fact that people are listening, do the conversation, yeah. and then air it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so tell us about the book, how she did it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the book, we put, we turned in our um, second proofread, so that's exciting to see, like, how close we're getting. To, and um, it comes out in March. I would love for it to be out by Christmas, but you can only pre-order on Christmas. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> yeah, um, pre-orders are super important, people. Do it. Yeah, pre-order, um, and we have, a, we've seen, like, some of the images on the inside, and we have some cool features in there, um, and we're just, yeah, we're excited, Sarah and I, to kind of share all these interviews. They're really, um, they're inspiring, but you also can learn a lot, especially, we were kind of aiming it more for high school-aged um, female athletes, just getting into the sport, and their coaches, and their parents, and kind of their system, but it, 
anyone would like the book, but that's kind of who we were trying to speak to and the interviews really do. So I wish I had, I had books similar to this, but not quite just for women like this. So I think it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Who are some of the stories? Give us a couple names that you follow in the book. So one of my favorites was we did a few mother daughter um, combinations and Liz McColgan and her daughter Ailish is really great because um, Liz coaches Ailish and she's running so well right now. And it's just any mother daughter combination is just really interesting to see like the thread of like what it was like when they were running. Now what's, you know, what's changed for the better, what's coming to light, what they've learned and how, like how much better um, it is for the next generation, which is encouraging. Um, and another one just like that was Shalane and her mom, Cheryl. So that was really interesting. Yeah. So I really liked those two. Oh my gosh. What about, so I saw the picture on the cover. It's Patty Catalano. I'm probably saying her last name wrong. Is that right? Yep. That's right. Okay. Um, <coughs> actually, I was, I, I was like scheduled to interview her at one point and our, her internet kept messing up. So then we just like never rescheduled it well. Um, but her story is super fascinating. I think she's been on your podcast, hasn't she? She has. And I, I've heard her story before. Um, I think I've read a few articles about her, but just hearing her tell it is every time is really amazing. So we're so glad that she was able to be in there too. And yeah, that cover photo was really cool. I'd seen that photo before. I think it's from the Tufts 10K or whatever used to be the Tufts 10K back in seven, seven, late seventies. Um, <coughs> So it's from Boston, and our designer really liked that photo. So who is your designer? The cover is amazing. It's great. I don't remember. There, like I hadn't, I didn't get to talk to them person to person. But we're working with um, Penguin Random House, so whoever is on their team, I think did a really great job. Yeah, it is really good. Okay, so talk to us about Sarah Slattery and how you guys decided to work together on this. Yeah. Yeah. So Sarah actually had the idea and it, like was the motivator behind it, and she called me in 2019 and we talk a lot because I've raced her all throughout my career and then I train with her a little bit and hang out a lot, a lot with her when I'm in Arizona where she lives um so she just called me when I was in Arizona in 2019 with the idea um <clears throat> and asked if I wanted to do it with her and I was like I'm really busy but yes I really want to do it <laughs> we'll, we'll just figure it out we're both busy but like this is cool um and it just that was right before COVID hit. Um, COVID shut everything down about three months later. Um, and at that point, we had only done our proposal. And so we were actually able to do all the interviews via Zoom during COVID, which actually was really cool. It kind of like everyone was free and mm -hmm. had less of a schedule. And um, it kind of got us through it. Like, it was very interesting to talk to everybody. Some women I hadn't had a chance to meet face to face, you know, so... Do you think you would have tried to do those in person had COVID not been a thing? Probably, probably only a few of them just because yeah. everyone's so spread out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how hard was the book proposal to write? <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, okay. It was, we had a lot of help actually. Um, Scott Douglas sent us a sample from his, I work with him at Runner's World as the editor and he was so helpful. And so I think our idea really carried it, you know, I think. It wasn't like the most professional looking proposal, but they loved the idea. Um, and so we got really lucky with who we were able to team up with. Do you think that, um, <laughs> like, so I'm sorry that you're, you're having to do this while you have a cold and your coffee. Um, do you think that like the podcasting and the book writing is, has been helpful in this time where you've had to take some time off serious running? I think so, uh, for sure. Like, um, it's cool to see other areas where you can kind of expand into, but still use your running background, and it's still interesting to you because it's still part of the sport. Um, so it's definitely something I want to keep doing if I can. Um, but it's something you can do while you're training, too. You can kind of pick it up and put it down. So it's been fun. Yeah. Have you thought about, like, you know, obviously you've been with Saucony for so long, so – now that you're actually entering like the whole pregnancy athlete thing will be a mother um have you thought about like how you're gonna work that with your sponsor and you know we talked about brand stuff um earlier in the conversation like what do those conversations look like with your sponsor 
Yeah. So, I mean, we had a <clears throat> um, sort of like pregnancy protection, like clause entered in our contract after basically after um, the New York Times piece came out. Mm -hmm. So that was like seriously impactful. Um, Go and, Lindsay Krauss. Right. Yeah. So um, that was great. Um, the president at Saucony and Kavasa is a woman. Um, and so I think she, that makes me feel more comfortable that she sort of is like, oh, of course, this should be in there, you know, um, whereas in the past, there had been like resistance to adding that to my contract. So I do feel good about that. Um, as far as like, doing anything marketing wise, I don't know if there's anything that will be, you know, using it as a story in any way. Um, that's kind of up in the air. But definitely feel supported. So it's good. Good. Okay, so babies do <coughs> April. Are you the type of person that's like, getting nursery together? Like, are you a big planner? I was always like last minute on everything. What does it look like in Molly Huddle's life? I'm a little last minute just because I feel like I don't know, like, I, I'm trying to think about that stuff. And I do I love decorating. But um, I just feel like it's a jinx. I don't know. I'm just like, I want to make sure everything's healthy and good before I buy stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I just feel, I'm just weird about it. But um, definitely starting to feel more real in the second half, like more imminent. <laughs> yeah. Have you had your like big 20 week ultrasound yet? Yeah, we had that yesterday. So that was super oh, fun. Yeah, that's exciting. That's always like just a huge relief and just like, okay, now we're really halfway there. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing what you can see too. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it feels um to me, it feels like you're 20 weeks, but I'm like, it doesn't even feel like halfway because when you find out you're pregnant, you're like five weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the last half will probably drag because I will be larger, <laughs> much larger. <laughs> so as of now, I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And then I can see myself slowing down for sure now, like going forward. So I'm like, okay, this might take a while. <laughs> now from my experience, and everybody's experience is different. You're kind of in like the sweet spot from like, for me, it was always like, I don't know, week like 16 or 17 to week like 30. So is that how you're feeling? Did you have first trimester icky feelings? Um, in hindsight, I was feeling a little crappy, but I kind of was just like, well, like, I feel better than I did when I was doing the marathon buildup. So <laughs> I'm not, I don't feel that bad. Um, but then, yeah, once I got to that point, I was like, oh, I actually feel normal, like more normal now. Like, yeah. I, can eat, I can eat anything and like, I'm not that tired. So yeah, I definitely have been able to run a little bit easier <laughs> yeah I remember always being like am I making this up in my head do I really am I this tired am I really this tired I know and then I, you get through and you're like yes I was tired I was kind of the same way I was like am I making an excuse because I know I'm pregnant or am I really this tired and then now I see like yeah you were a little extra tired <laughs> um what about food are you like eating all the carbs do you have certain cravings I wouldn't say cravings, but one of the, the two things that I never um, was disgusted by, because like sometimes you'd be eating something and then you'd be like, suddenly think it's gross. Yeah. Um, but the two things I could always eat were chocolate and breakfast sandwiches, like bacon, and egg and cheese sandwiches. So I eat one like every day, okay. <laughs> but I always liked those. So I don't know if I would call it a craving, but... <laughs> Um, do you have your running stroller picked out or do you think you'll be, I always remember when Kara had her baby, she was like, I don't do a lot of stroller runs because this is my job, but do you envision doing stroller runs? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I might be along those same lines. Um, I didn't rush to pick it out because, um, you kind of can't use them for a couple months anyway. Right. So right. I was like, I'll just see if one appears in my driveway somehow <laughs> between all my friends and maybe like a sponsor or something. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It will happen. <laughs> I don't, I'm putting it out there. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. If I'll like doing that or not, that is, I've only ever done it a few times with <clears throat> like Roisin and I'm not very good at steering. So I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to do this, but we'll see if I have to, I will. <laughs> you like take over her stroller for like a mile or something. When you oh, for like, together? for like, half a mile not even yeah so I don't have a great but I've at least like tested one before it's really awkward at first but I think you get really used to it and the single is so much easier than the double yeah that just looks like a workout it is yeah we recently moved to Raleigh North Carolina and it is so 
hilly here, I won't even attempt the double. I mean, it's just like 12 minute mile up these hills with the double. Yeah, we see, we used to see this woman doing tempo runs with the stroller on our, our workout mm -hmm. loop over by Brown. And we were like, man, she's like doing it. Like that's extra hard with the stroller. So I'm like, maybe I'll be her now. I don't know. <laughs> um, who, I wonder who she is. She, would, she must be good. I, yeah, I don't know. Cause she looked like she was running like six minute pace with a stroller. Whoa. Like, yeah. <laughs> We need to hunt her down. She would probably I know. be cool that Molly Huddle thought she was really fast. I haven't seen her in a while, but when we would see her, we'd be like, is she, is she, are we going to race her soon? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Did you give her like a head nod or like a good job? Yeah, we'd be like, oh, hey, <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> are you um, a Providence lifer? I think so. I love it here. Yeah. So I've been here. I've been here a long time now. Um, and it's just a really cool city. And I like the East Coast. So yeah. Um, what does your husband, Kurt, what does he do? Um, so he coached, he just started coaching officially at Brown. Okay. Um, he was volunteering there and then like coaching some athletes post collegiately, which he still does that too. Um, and then helping me too. But yeah, he has more of an official job there now. Um, okay, we'll wrap up here. What was what was it like spectating? I'm trying to think how long ago it was that you ran Boston in the torrential downpours. 2018. Yep. So we're <laughs> three years later, right? 19, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how was spectating Boston? You didn't go, did you? I I drove up to Boston and just watched. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Yep. Yeah. How was that? It was good. Like watching. Well, no one's really been able to race for major marathons for a while I think two years to 18 months depending on which one was your last one so um just watching people come down Boylston and seeing like people cheering and stuff I was like oh like this is so great that it's back and then I was like oh, I wish I was in there like I really want to do this one more time because I felt like the last time was just so different than what I expected and like Boylston was definitely not what I expected like I was like oh i was like barely like zombie walking down Boylston. So I definitely got that urge to be like, Ooh, I definitely want to do this one again. Um, so yeah, it, but it was, it was really great to see it back in all in New York and like all the other ones. Yeah. I, I mean, I had the vision of you coming down Boylston stamped in my head because we were spectating that year and like so much strength and tenacity for you to finish that freaking race. Yeah, I remember, like, I, I don't remember super clearly, because everything was kind of, like, slow in my head, but I remember thinking, like, I should speed up, and then I tried to, and I started to get the, like, jelly, like, fall over legs, and I was like, no, like, you don't want to be in someone's video crawling down <laughs> oil stand, so you, you actually can't go any faster, and then I just kind of, like, yeah, it was, it was so cold, I was just frozen, but... I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Well, Molly, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Best of luck with the rest of your pregnancy, the book. You have a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. <laughs> have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. You too. Happy holidays. Thanks Happy everyone holidays. for joining. <laughs> Bye everybody. Thanks, Molly. Bye, Lindsay.